with Potomac Beads. Join me in learning some bead embroidery featuring the Comet earrings. We're going to be working with a cabochon and we're going to expand from that cabochon showing you how to include and create things hanging down as well as how to do the backing and sew to the foundation. If you need any materials, make sure to check out the links to shop with us online. Gather up all your supplies and let's get started. So to begin our embroidery piece, we have a bunch of supplies, but we're going to be adding these in kind of layers as we're working on them. So I have 11 ounce seed beads, Delicas in 11s and 15s, three millimeter check glass, a six by eight millimeter flat oval, and then of course our Druzy cabs in the 12 millimeter. So right now I'm just focusing on my Druzy cab. I have my stiff stuff here, as well as my Delicas. The Delica that I'm using in the 11-0 is the Opaque C Opal, and the color number is 2125. And then I'm also using the Transparent Root Beer in a 15-0 Delica color. For the Comet earrings, we're going to be creating these earrings on our stiff stuff, and I'm gonna show you how to attach the backing, and we're going to put some beads on top and below, hanging down some more crystals. The first thing we need to do is we need to cut out and get a piece of stiff stuff ready to go. So to get our piece of stiff stuff ready to go, I want you to have an idea of about how big you want your size to be. So you can use this other one here as a base, and I don't want to waste too much stiff stuff, but I don't want to have not enough around the corners or the edges. So I'm going to look at the piece that I already have here and kind of push it out, grab my, my scissors, and simply cut out my section of my stiff stuff that I'm gonna use. Now if you want to, you can keep it all attached, that's up to you. I like more than I need so I can have a hold on it, it makes it easier for me. Keep the rest of your stiff stuff, put that aside. And now what I'm gonna do is trace to begin my actual cabochon. So I'm just using a pencil here and I'm gonna trace around the outer edge of my cabochon. Some people will glue them down, I don't bother because I'm gonna be using peyote stitch and that's going to hold my cab in place. All right, so I have my resin druzy cab in that AB coating right there traced out. That's gonna be the center of our earring and that's where we're gonna work our way out from. For thread and needles, it's up to you what type of needle and thread you like. I'm gonna be using some white wildfire beading thread. You can also use some uh, KO thread, you can use some Miyuki thread, you can use some of the uh, thinner Nymo thread. It's kind of up to you what thread you use. With the thread and needle, I have a size 10 needle on here. It's a little bit stiffer, so I like that. You can also do an embroidery needle. And at the very end, all I'm gonna do is just tie a simple knot. Tying this simple knot then, I wanna take my needle and thread along that line that I just drew. So you can kind of see through it usually, you can hold it up to the light, see through it, and I'm gonna look through and find that line as I'm looking through here, and bring my needle from the back side towards the front of that line. My seed beads that I put around first, I'm going to do 28 11 seed beads and I'm going to put them on two at a time. These two at a time, we're gonna make so that the seed beads sit right on the line. I don't want them to sit to the interior of the line because then my cab's not going to fit. I'm gonna add two of my Delicas, let them fall down next to the stiff stuff, right in a row like that, you can kind of press it with your finger, and then I'm gonna sew from the front to the back, bringing my needle and thread to the back. Coming to the back then, flip over your stiff stuff, go back to the beginning knot where your beads started. You're gonna sew through those two beads that you just added. We're always gonna do this back stitching if you're a sewer. You're gonna add two more. Put those next to the last two. I kinda lay them on my design. I usually push them with my fingers just to kinda stay on that outer edge. Go in and sew right in front of them, down from the front to the back of the stiff stuff. Coming out the back of the stiff stuff, I'm going to go back to the start of that. Some people will go back even more and you'll go back through the last three beads rather than just the last two. That's your preference. I'm gonna go up through there. There's no right or wrong way. And then go back through the two that I just put on. 
My final step as I go around here, I will sew through the entire row of C beads to round it out. So you're gonna keep going around, pushing the two beads. I like two at a time, it's a manageable amount and it's good to keep, make sure that you're doing an even count if you're doing peyote along the embroidery. I'm gonna push those right to where they go, sew down through. As I come out the back here then, flipping that over, going back to my last thread line, coming out there, grabbing those last two or three beads, and then continuing on. I'm gonna go the whole way around the circle here, and I don't want them to be too tight. So if they start to kind of fold over, they get a little bit of tightness, leave a little bit more room when you put your needle in front of your beads. We're gonna to get to the point that we have 28 of our Delicas around that outer pencil drawn line prior to dropping in our cabochon. Once you're adding your last two beads here, you're going to, coming out of the last one, I'm not gonna to bother to sew down, I'm gonna sew around the entire line of those 28 beads. That's gonna round it out, so that way if there is any thread that's sitting kind of off to an angle closer to the middle or further out on the stiff stuff, this brings all of these beads into a nice line. After doing so, we're gonna progress with some peyote stitch. And if you don't know peyote stitch, you do want to watch another video first. And I would suggest the Everyday Earrings as a good video to watch, learning how to do this first step of the peyote bezel. Once you're through those 28 beads, joining them in the circle, you're going to exit one of your delicas, and we're gonna do one more row of delicas. This row, instead of 28 going on, 14 will go on, so we're going to do it in half. You're gonna pick up one more 11 OC bead in the same color of that delica, skip the next bead in line, so I'm coming out of bead number one, I skip bead number two from that initial row of 28, and I sew through bead number three. After I sew through bead number three, I grab another Delica, skip over bead number four, and sew through bead number five. We're gonna go the whole way around the circle here, adding in that next row, which is actually our third row of our peyote stitch. And you can see that nice kind of brick wall starting to happen look of two, one, two, one. Continue the whole way around until you have 14 new 11 Delicas on the actual piece. Once you put on that 14th and final bead, what we're going to do is step up. To step up to do the next row of peyote stitch, I'm gonna be coming through the first bead that my thread was originally coming out of when I started to add the second, or this third row of 14 beads. And then I'm going to sew in to bead number one from that row that I just completed. So we added 14 beads. You wanna step up so your thread is coming out of bead number one of those 14. We're now gonna switch from our 11 Odelicas to our 15 Odelicas. I want you to do two rows of the 15 Odelicas. And as we do these, we're going to put our cabochon and push it right down in the center there so it fits nicely. And we'll start to bring the beads around the top to encapsulate and close in the cabochon. So you can see I've already gone in and put in five of my 15 O's. You're adding your 15 O and then you're sewing through the next 11 O Delica that is from the row of 14 that you added. So you pick up a 15 Delica, sew through the next one sitting up. And you'll notice I put my cabochon in right away and kind of pushed it in there. So that way as I'm going around and creating that second or that first row of 15s and then as I create my second row, it's really going to start to hold that cabochon in. When you are done with row number one of 15s, you're going to step up into the first 15 that we just added in this first row of 15s to add your second row. The second row of 15s that you add, 14 of them, you're going to sew through the 15, add a 15, sew through the next 15 that's there, and so on. So we have half of it done here, a couple more to add, and then I'll step up through that first 15, getting ready to add my second row. As you add your final 15 O, you're gonna go back into that first 15 O that your thread was originally coming out of. And then what we're gonna do is sew down towards the back of the project and get your a uh, piece of your, or your three millimeter beads out so that way we can go around the circle there. The 15 gets added, pulled down nice and tight, 
And then you're going to sew down on an angle through the peyote stitch, through the 11 O's, to the back of the piece, right on that angle, and right out through the back. Once you come out the back then, we'll get ready to add in our beads around the front, which are going to be the exact same method and way of the Delicas two at a time. So just like we did with the previous row of the Delicas, same thing here, we're just going larger. One thing to keep in mind as we go towards the exterior, this is our last row. So rather than making sure as you're sewing, obviously you want to sew kind of right down in front of the beads, but sew if you can closer to the Delicas. When you cut, you want that thread line in the interior, so that way when you put our backing on, we have room for that. So same deal here, we're going to put our two beads on, go through the back, come up through the front again, sew through those last two beads, and add two more. As the final row again, one more time, I'll go back through all of these beads in the row. As you're adding these beads along the sides of the stiff stuff, you're going to get a count of 18 total that are going to fit really, really nicely around the cabochon. Once we're done adding those 18, I'll show you how we're going to trace out our little oval flat back crystal there and do another row of delicas around it. Once you're done adding your 18 three millimeter pearls, what you're going to do is trace again, once again, the cabochon that you're using, which for us is gonna be a flat back crystal. And this is in the peridot color, so I put it down here, traced right along the edge line, making sure that I leave a little bit of room here at the bottom for my seed beads to go in. Just like I did now, so you can see I'm coming out of my blue pearl, I'm just gonna tuck right along the back towards the interior here, rather than going towards the exterior, and I'm going to come out right at the start of one of those yellow lines. Coming out the start of those yellow lines, time to pour out a couple delicas, and we're going to do 16 delicas on our row one, which again is really row one and two. So just like we did last time, two beads get picked up, lay them right along that yellow line, so down through, and then repeat again. From the back, through those two, add two more, again, until you have 16 total. Once we have those 16, we're gonna step up and do every other bead, adding another one, and do some more peyote stitch. For the oval, we do a two rows, right after this one, we're gonna do two rows of our 15 O's. So just 16 total 11 O delicas, and then followed by two rows of eight. Once you have your row of 16, you're gonna do the same thing where you're going to sew around the piece. Because the crystal over oval is tiny, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my Loctite glue, just the tiniest little dab, put a tiny little bit right there in the center. I wanna make sure I'm not gluing the beads. Do not glue the beads. And then I'm going to push my oval in place there and make sure that it stays down along the line. And what I'm making sure here is that it's sitting nice and straight and not on an angle at all. The seed beads are sitting right on top of the three millimeter beads and you have your earrings kind of matching. Now you notice I haven't done the backing yet on number one, I like to do that at the same time. So I'm doing each step at the same time. Now that that flat back oval is glued in there, I'm gonna do again, two rows of my 15. So I'm dumping back out a couple of my 15s, and because I started with 16, I'm doing two rows of eight. Adding a bead, skipping over the next one, and sewing through the next Delica in line. Again, two rows of 15s, eight each, and then we'll be done with this first part of the embroidery and we'll get ready to add the back. Once you're done adding your two rows here, what you're going to do is bring your thread and needle down into the project along that peyote stitch. So I'm just drawing it right along the edge. And then I'm gonna sew to the back of the project, making sure that I'm sewing towards the interior. At this point here, you can keep the needle and thread on if you want. If you do wanna keep it on, you wanna keep it on to the top of the project coming out of one of the beads. I'm going to simply tie a knot. What I'm gonna do is tuck under my thread underneath one of those little bridge threads there. So through a tiny bit of the backing. So through that knot, 
And there you have it. What I can do then also with my thread back zap or my thread murder is go in here, leave a little bit of space above the thread as I burn it off. And then as I burn it flush against the project, it creates a little nub that's not gonna go through the stiff stuff. I'm gonna go to the next section here, same deal. Burn off the extra thread end that I would have started with. If you started with a knot or if you started with a little burnt nub, we're going to cut this down now. Where I'm going to cut this down is right along where the beads sit. The edging is something that comes with practice, so don't worry about it. But you want to get a nice sharp scissors, cut right along, and when you flip it over, you want to notice that I still have a little bit of room on the exterior of all of my thread stitches, because when I cut my stiff stuff, which is basically gonna be like a little cookie cutter. We're going to cut the stiff stuff, or I'm sorry, the ultra suede here, which I'm using the Admiral Blue color, to line up exactly with that under backing. So now you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna go around the outer edge and cut out the design. So for our next step, we're gonna utilize our ultra suede. And what I've done is I've cut out my ultra suede. It comes in longer pieces. And I like to use really uh, neutral colors like navy, black, gray, white, because you'll notice that a little bit goes a long way. And what I did is cut it out to about the size of the earring. I'm going to turn my piece over here towards the interior. I'm not doing the exterior. I'm taking some of my Loctite glue at the top and at the bottom here. And if you happen to want to make this a post, here's where you would add your post right now to the back there and then poke it through the piece of fabric. I'm gonna take it now, pick up my ultra suede, line it up, so that way it's kind of right in the middle there. Press it down, give it a couple minutes to dry. And then as it dries off, I'm gonna go in and cut it out to mimic, again, kind of like a cookie cutter, you're cutting it out to mimic the front of the earring as well. If it's cut too small, you're gonna have instances where you can't really cover up that white stiff stuff as we go in and do some brick stuff, brick stitch around the edging. So it's better to have it just the tiniest little bit over the stiff stuff on the edges. Once it dries, I'm gonna go in here with my scissors and kind of trim down the edges so that way I have a nice form as such. Get ready then with your 11 OC beads is what we're gonna use and I'm actually going to switch to my green wildfire beading thread. That way I'm going to see a little bit of thread on the exterior but the green thread will kind of hide that line. After cutting down the rest of your backing, it is now time to do the edging to encapsulate and hold the backing onto the design. We're gonna be using brick stitch for this, and like I said, I'm switching to green because one, it can be kind of more disguised in the blue, and also you're not gonna see it as much on the top of the brick stitch. Now there's tons of options when it comes to it, how to do the brick stitch if you wanna do an extra little bead on. We're gonna do most simplistic and just do one row of the brick stitch. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is take the end of my thread here, and I'm gonna take my thread burner and just kind of burn it down into a little bit of a ball. I'm gonna take my thread and needle, and I wanna start, I'm actually gonna start somewhere at the top, because I wanna make sure that the three beads at the top where I'm going to put my ear wire here sit so I can put the three three millimeter beads right there on top of them. So I'm going to take my thread and needle, and at the very end there, kind of put it between my stiff stuff and my ultra suede. I'm just kind of tuck it down in there. We're gonna be sewing the whole way around so it doesn't really matter to a certain degree how far in it is. From here, I know I'm gonna start a little bit off center because I wanna get my three beads on. To begin, I'm gonna go from the front to the back. I'm gonna use my 11 O seed beads and the 11 O seed beads that I'm using kind of bring the colors all together and have that pop from the middle. And this is the silver lined emerald in the Miyuki color. Grabbing the thread and needle, I'm gonna put two beads on to start out my brick stitch. I'm going to add one bead on after this. I'm gonna always start to the back, which is gonna to help to bring my back towards the front. So I'm going to go about two beads over and sew from the backing through the stiff stuff and then bring my needle out. So I'm catching on to the two of them. You can see it right there. 
bringing your thread and needle then out towards the front. I'm going to sew back up through bead number two towards bead number one, which will make this sit and stand on edge, right like that. Add another bead, go over a little bit further, one bead down, sew through the ultra suede as well as the stiff stuff. When you're sewing through these, you want to make sure that you're not catching on to any thread edges. So you're not catching on to any of the thread that was in your design. If you are, just back it out a little bit and reposition it. So you can see right there, I'm going through to at an angle. I'm going to bring my thread and needle always from the back towards the front. That seed bead, push it up towards the top. And you're sewing back up through so it stands with the holes facing vertical. Give a nice little tight pull, and that pulls that in. So then I have right away three at the top. When I come back to the top then, I will add in my little three beads. But I'm going to proceed the whole way around the edge, making sure that as I do this, I'm going through both the stiff stuff as well as the ultra suede from the back towards the front, back through that bead so that way it stands on the top and on the edge. As you're doing this, you want to try to get an equal amount of thread lines there. So when you turn over the back, if you look really closely, you'll see the same amount of your thread lines the whole way around the back of the piece. I'm going to continue the whole way around going in and adding my seed beads to the outside of my comet earring just like I did on number one. Once you get back to the top and you're coming out your last bead, you're going to go down through bead number one. When you come down through bead number one, I'm gonna push my thread, I'm not going through any beads right now, I'm just pushing it to the back so we can stay consistent. I'm gonna go through bead number one, so into the back towards the front, and then back through bead number one so it stands up on its end. Once you're back through there, Here's where the fun starts to happen, that if you want to, you can go into the earrings here and you can add some extra beads. I'm gonna add the three, three millimeter beads at the top, along with my wire guard or wire protector. I love the finished look that they give, and that's why I always like to use those, especially on the tops of earrings. So what we're gonna do with our wire guard or wire protector is we're actually gonna open it up a little bit. So just take your fingers, open up just the tiniest little bit, pulling back so that way it sits perfectly around the three millimeter bead. Coming out of bead number one, we're gonna skip over bead number two and go into bead number three that we added. So I'm gonna do one, two, and three beads on my thread and needle, and I'm gonna sew into bead number three from the top down towards the piece to create that nice little arch. Go over with your thread back into bead number one, so up through bead number one, so we're just skipping right over bead two, the thread line will just kind of hang out in the middle there, you won't see it at all. And you're going to sew up through the first three millimeter, out through the second three millimeter, and then grab your wire guard or your wire protector. Go up through the one side of your wire guard, down through the other side, and when you come out, you're gonna go into the opposite side of the three millimeter bead that your thread is currently coming out of. That will pull that wire protector, or that wire guard, right to center. We're gonna reinforce this one more time, going back up through the wire guard, down through the wire guard on the other side. And then as we exit, we're gonna go through that three millimeter bead. Oops, make sure your thread stays in the wire guard. I'm just gonna push that back up there. Hold my fingers near the top, pull tight down the side here. And I'm gonna go down through bead number three. And then right away, I'm gonna go into my peyote stitch here at the top. I'm gonna do a couple passes of the peyote stitch going right along the thread line so you don't see any additional thread. I'm gonna sew into the piece. I'm gonna bring my thread out right after one of the delicas and I'm simply going to burn my thread edge down. Burning it down into that nice little ball so that way it ends it nice and finished. 
At this point here, you can be completely done with your bead embroidery if you want to. So you don't have to go in and add any more crystals. You can have fun now adding on to the actual edging if you want to. So if you want to drop down any of the crystals here, like the ovals, if you want to drop down any of those set in stone, they're really, really easy to do. Drop down a couple briolettes as well. So you can be completely finished or you can move on and add always, just thinking about regular peyote stitch and bracelets, anything on to the brick stitch like you normally would with that technique. So if you do want to keep going and decorate the bottom a little bit more, what you can do, and again, you can stop, just attach your ear wire, you're good to go. Grab a piece of your green thread if you still have it attached to a needle. And if you already were thinking about doing this, you might already have the thread down at the end that you haven't unattached yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a stop. I'm balling up the end of my thread big enough here with my thread burner that it's not going to go through the middle of one of my beads. Looking at my earring, I'm going to find the four seed beads that sit pretty much in the center and catch on to those at the bottom. I'm going to count one, two, three, and four right there. I'm going to go through bead number four from the bottom towards the top. Give a nice yank, make sure that it's not gonna come out there. If it comes out, do it again. This time you can sew through that base just the tiniest little bit. And then up through bead number four, and that will definitely keep it for you. Once you're in there through bead number four and coming out, I want you to grab one 11 seed bead, and I'm using some of the Potomac's uh, ovals in settings and these are the green opal color going along with my green opal seed beads. And after the 11-0 and going through one hole of those, I'm going to add one more 11-0. Pick up three more to tone it down of kind of my navy color, that pastel petrol, three millimeter bead. One more 11. Back up through the second hole of the long oval. Add one more 11-0 seed bead and then count over again back to bead number one. So there's four, three, two, one. I'm gonna sew up through bead number one. Give a tight pull. Sew down through bead number two. Sew back up towards the top, bead number three. So I'm just catching on to this brick stitch here. Back through bead number one. Or sorry, bead number four, we're going backwards, that's right. I'm gonna go back down through that first 11-0, out through to the other side. And when I come out the other side of my crystal, I wanna make sure that I'm coming out just through the hole. So I just wanna come out right at the base of the hole there. And obviously all of this is optional. One more 11, one more of my three millimeter check glass bead, one more 11, you can change that up for whatever you want. And then I'm gonna go back through my design again and back up through the 11-0 right after the crystal. When I pull that nice and tight, it just kind of decorates the bottom of the piece. Coming up here then to get rid of my thread, I'm gonna sew again into bead number one. Then I'm gonna sew back up through the bead before it. Sew back down the next bead. And then I'm gonna sew into the interior of my piece. So I'm sewing into the backing then. Once I'm sewed into the backing there, just like I did previously, I'm gonna take my thread burner, my thread zap, burn off the thread, leaving a little bit of a tail, burn the piece, bend the piece back so it doesn't get any of the threads that are connected to beads, and just burn that flush down next to the project. Here's where that green really comes in handy. Last thing that I need to do is open and attach to an ear wire. I love for the bead embroider earrings when they sit on some of the lever backs just because they took so much time you don't want to lose them. If you're using a regular ear wire, use a plastic back so you don't lose them as well. And again, if you want to make them a little bit smaller, what you could have done is actually put a post behind the oval. Keep in mind with this bead embroidery video, it is meant to teach you these techniques. So you don't have to hang more beads at the bottom. You don't have to do the ovals at the top. You can stop at the middle. You can just do the ovals at the top. You really, really can make them entirely your own. Hopefully these 
trip to the love. These little tips and tricks will help you along the way to not be intimidated by bead embroidery. Remember, it's a learning process. So you're gonna look at your first bead embroidery piece and think, oh man, I could have done a lot differently. Yes, this is a learning process to learn all of these fun different techniques that you can add into your beading arsenal. As always, thank you so much for joining me in making these comet earrings and hopefully learning a thing or two about bead embroidery. This is actually the first bead embroidery video that I have brought to you, and I know many of you are experts, so please give your comments below. Change up and say what your favorite type of needle is. You could go for a tulip short, sharp, sharp short, and really explain to people why you use what you use, give suggestions, ideas, ask questions, and really make the comments in this video interactive. You can also give a little thumbs thumbs up if you want to see more bead embroidery videos and more design ideas, as well as subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. As always, if you need any materials, you can check us out at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. Hopefully this video helps to intimidate you a little less when it comes to bead embroidery and you try your hand at a new type of beading craft. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy your comet earrings.